Sponsored by Witch Song Miniatures, the number one most subscribed to tribe on my mini factory. So you want to use your airbrush to its utmost potential. Here are four hacks to paint better miniatures faster. Hey, it's Lila, and I'm not very good at the airbrush. So you might be asking, why am I doing this video? These techniques are so easy that all you need to be is so-so to get great results. Let's talk about creating better xenolithal highlights using translucent paint and more. Xenolithal priming is one of the most basic techniques of airbrushing. Black over the model, white over top. The opposite of this. This technique shows the highlights and shadows of your model, as well as acting as a base for applying your colors. And while using black and white totally works, we can do so much better. Instead of black, we're going to use color for our shadow. Using color can help make painting easier in the long run, make your model more interesting, and help tie the model together overall. On this model, you can see how the purple shadow color still shows through in all my other colors. It also helps add to the feeling of whimsy, and made painting the vibrant orange cloth easier, as black is harder to blend into orange compared to purple blending into orange. For this model, I'm doing my shadow color in a mix of deep magenta and purple, with a bit of white for opacity. In my expert opinion, purple is the best color to use for shadows. Seriously, if anyone ever reaches out to you and you want to confirm it's me, just ask for the best shadow color. But dark green and red are also good shadow colors. How do you choose your shadow color? The easiest option is just to choose a darker color of whatever your main color will be. This version isn't quite as interesting, but again, painting from a dark green to a lighter green is easier than black to green. If you're up to it, I would do something more exciting, like blue shadows up to green midtones and highlights. Second is to choose a color that will complement your chosen colors. For this model, I'm using purple, orange, and teal. I'm choosing to do purple magenta shadow, as it can easily be blended into the orange and teal. Three, when in doubt, do blue shadows. Blue is the tried and true standard for creating interesting shadows. Depending on the vibrancy of your chosen shadow color, you may want to paint the entire model white first, then go over it with your base shadow colors, as vibrant colors show the best over white. Since my primer is gray, I can get away with just adding a little bit of white to my purple and then I'll go back over it later with a darker purple to get that rich, vibrant color that I'm looking for. Now, normally our Xenothal highlights don't have to be perfect, but to really maximize some of the techniques we're going to be using later in this video, we want our Xenothal highlights to be the best they can be. White ink is commonly used for Xenothal priming because its translucent nature makes it easier to build up in a smooth gradation. So maybe it's me, but I still get speckles sometimes. Of course, that could just comment to my airbrush skills. To combat this, I like to do a mixture of shadow color and white ink to create a medium color to place my white on top of. Using white ink still gets us a little bit of that translucent application. As you continue, you can add more and more white to your mixture, or just empty the airbrush and then white over top. The big thing is to allow the paint enough time to dry after each layer, as ink can get sticky if you don't. Okay, let's start having fun. Now we're going to talk about how to use our Xenothal highlights to their full potential by working with translucent colors. No! This is too f***ing expensive to just leave like this. Working with translucent paint allows our xenothal priming to show through, basically adding color to the shadows and highlights we already created. I like to use ink from Scale 75 Intensity Set or Contrast Paint. I prefer to apply my translucent paint with an airbrush, as it allows me to apply it far more lightly and evenly. It can be easy to override your xenothal priming, so work slowly. You can also apply your paint with a paintbrush, which works particularly well if you're using contrast paint on a heavily textured area like you see here. 
From here, I like to continue working with translucent paint and working in a glazing style. Glazing is the act of building up your colors through layers upon layers of translucent paint. The thinner your glaze is, the more layers you will need to apply. My highlights are created by adding in a bit of white ink, while my shadows and midtones can be created straight from the paint container. I test the glazes on the back of my hand to test for opacity, but I want to find a better way to test this other than on my skin. Once I'm happy with the consistency, I'm then switching back and forth between applying my shadows and highlights to allow each layer time to dry. Let's take a minute to talk about Witch Song Miniatures. Witch Song Miniatures are anything but mini. They have some of the biggest, most detailed miniatures I've ever seen. For October, I chose to paint their Lord of the Harvest bust, but with how detailed it is, I really wish I had chosen the full-size model. For just $1 a month, you can get access to their brand new, highly detailed and pre-supported 3x3 miniature and correlating D&D 5e stat sheet. For $3 a month, you get everything else and 50% store discount, exclusive seasonal and loyalty rewards. Just want to try them out? Head over to Witch Song's Tribe to download the epic 140mm Faceless King model completely free. Check out Witch Song today using the link in my description box. Alright, back to painting. Next is blending with an airbrush. The classic way to blend with an airbrush is to apply all of your paint with the airbrush, or paint it with an airbrush first and then go back over it with a paintbrush later. However, the by far better way to work is paintbrush first, then airbrush second. Applying paint with a paintbrush allows us more control, as we can place our paint exactly where we want it. Then create the seamless blend after with an airbrush. As I'm applying my paint, you'll notice that my contrast is rather large and my high mid-tone is being applied in large areas. Since my aim is not that good, I wanted to leave more room for my airbrush color. Consider this illustration. It is far harder for me to apply a smooth layer of airbrush paint over two very close colors, compared to applying my paint more loosely and blending two colors that are further apart in location and value. Once my paints are applied, I'm creating a mixture of the two in a paper cup off to the side and mixing an airbrush thinner medium to help gain transparency. Before you begin applying your paint, test it off to the side. We want the paint to be pretty translucent, like glazing, but with an airbrush. Due to the proximity we need for our model, as well as the thin nature of the paint, you will need to test the air pressure to achieve a smooth application with no spider webbing or splattering. In general, a PSI of 20 is recommended. With our colors in the airbrush, go over the area lightly, pulling the trigger back ever so slightly and working in a small circular motion. This motion helps reduce the likelihood of spider webbing. You will need to do several passes, allowing each layer to dry before applying a new one. You can speed up this drying time by blowing air straight through your gun. I'm then repeating the same process over again, but this time with a lighter color on smaller area. Another tip is to work in small bursts of your airbrush. This allows more visual control, as sometimes the airbrush is faster than we can react. This might take longer to paint, but it's worth avoiding the mess of spider webbing. All right, that's it for me. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, go join me over on Patreon. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.